See what I mean about graphic design. You know, it's it's uh, his panels, his his page layout, but the panels themselves became shapes. And you start working in a lot of scratch techniques. Uh, these, th this is relatively probably like a razor blade. AKA Patterns. Here we go. We got John Byrne, Jay Lee, and Scott Collins in this episode. And we're talking about this completely forgotten comic book run. Namor, the Submariner, the greatest that character has ever been. And it leads into the greatest experiment of that character. Namor becomes Savage Namor. And then we have a drastic art style change. We have the usherer of change, John Byrne, along for the ride. And then we get a fill-in artist. And we're going to discuss it all. I'm going to break it down to you. This one's going to be a ch -ch shotgun blast. It's just like a brain dump that I'm going to bring to you from the drawing table. Let's go. <laughs> AKA Patters, we gotta adjust that a little bit. Welcome back to the channel, Peter A. DeLuca here, and known throughout Philadelphia, PA, Europe, and the vast multiverse as your eclectic one. We punch a lot at the screen here. Guys, welcome back to the channel. I love having you. I love bringing you to my drawing table so we can just love comic books together and that's what this channel is all about now given you know we get some hardcore opinions we we go against the grain we speak our mind we find crevices and veins and chinks in armor we uncover some comic book lies and inconsistencies and here we go we actually read the books that i present to you now sometimes like you kind of saw with this recent chapel episode of rob liefeld young blood chapel episode Sometimes I, I get so excited, I just want to share something with you, you all of you. And I just want to do almost just like this. Like, just dump out the ideas and put up the camera, have the camera above the drawing table. And I just want to present to you what I'm thinking. That is today's case. But today's idea, the, the actual idea for this video, I've been just battling it for a while because... And, and I've done... Attempts at it. I've done slightly different formats. Uh, some of it is in the editing bay. I think we're, we're getting there. We've done it with EVS, Ethan Van Scarver, with his whole Impulse Impact. Uh, what? Where was Impulse before DC hired him to come on Impact? And we got close. And this episode here, we're just, I'm literally vomiting 90s comic books. But we're not only going to get into Namor, the Submariner. Uh, his defining run, and we have John Byrne, the greatest com comic book anything in the history of the known universe. John Byrne gives us the greatest run of Namor. Uh, it's roughly a solid, like, like two-year run. It goes a little bit further than, than two years, but you really are with this character and the way how he... Uh, myth builds and, and adds, uh, like, a, another pool of characters... He goes into the Elena stuff. He goes into the surface stuff. He turns Submariner more into a business mogul. All of these things fit. And some of his enemies and some of his confidants are of both. They're of Elena and they're of the surface world. Then John Byrne segues everything. Namor the Submariner. He seg segues that into the savage Namor. And then we get one of the 90s most explosive artists, Jay Lee. And we're going to analyze a little bit of his evolution, where he goes and where he is now in his career. We're going to go into books like John Burns' OMAC. And we're going to introduce Scott Collins, who came in as a fill-in artist, and what some of that was like. Because we see fill-in artists that have failed for Tom McFarlane, Rob Liefeld, Jim Lee. Now, some of those guys, like Eric Larson for Tom McFarlane's sake, uh, were of a stature. Scott Collins is coming in doing his very best to maintain the look and the feel of Jay Lee's The Savage Namor, and that's that segue we mentioned earlier. It's a vomit in today's episode. Some of you actually might think it is vomit-worthy. 
I love sharing a lot of these ideas. I love expressing them to you. If there's anything you can do for me on this channel, you give a like, you give a comment, you show it off to your friends, and you help us grow. So maybe you can do that. Huh? Come on. Come on. Do it. Uh, before we hit that drawing table, but AKA Patters, get ready for some 90s goodness. I am pumped. I love this style of video, and we're going to be doing Rob Liefeld, Tom McFarlane, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, everyone but Eric Larson, because we don't like, we just don't like Larson. We just can't do it. But people, let's go. Come on. Arr. AKA Patters, as you were expecting, based on that wonderful intro, we have Omak. As you were expecting, we have Seven Sons, uh, part one. As you were expecting, Zen Intergalactic Ninja. As you were expecting, Jay Lee and John Byrne. Let's get some. All right, this is our path. I thought I would just do this. Like, I didn't want to do too much research. I didn't want to talk about how long uh, Jay Lee was our Namor for or uh, the impact of the Namor series. I just wanted to organize this with all of you while just kind of going through a couple memories. So I was there when John Byrne launched Namor with Marvel Comics. And in my view, just as like a month to month book, this, this is the absolute best Namor has ever been. He incorporates a lot of what he did with Man of Steel into Namor. You kind of want to say, uh, because he expands, like, again, like, uh, LexCorp over here, right? He expands Namor's mythology, the villains, his uh, assistant characters or accessory characters. He goes into Elanis. We do the politics of Elanis, and we do all of these things. And, again, like, he introduces... A lot of new characters and concepts. I mean, it, look, guys. Issue 15 here. We have Namor flying into the Savage Land on a giant winged red lion. But we get a lot of variation. We get uh, environmentalism. We get really nice stuff. And when I was younger, this was like basically what I, w I was reading this. I remember... Excuse that, aka Patters. I got a phone call. Sometimes we do our recording smack middle in the business day. Yeah, so when I was reading the John Byrne Namor, it really did set the stage for what I saw in the image guys. Because there was a, a pure contrast. And this was, I remember reading this, I was reading the, the Mark Spector Moon Knight at the time. A lot of these books have really never popped in value. And the superhero storytelling, this is still derived from decades ago. And a lot of people like to say that John Byrne never participated in image, meaning like he was uh, yeah, anti-image. And the wild thing, though, is that if we get into, let's just pull uh, Jay Lee. So... John Byrne helps Jay Lee transition into Namor to become the Savage Namor. And we are to continue Namor's greatest run. Because we we went to a height where the Namor was a, like a industrialist superhero, a part of Elanis. And then we revert him into this very stark, again, angry dude, okay? It's a 180. But here we have, look, John Byrne words. And, you know, we even jump ahead, right? Like, let's jump ahead. We have issue 26 here. Let's jump ahead to 37, right? Like, a year later. And Jay Lee has really developed. He's coming to his own. Uh, we have Bob Harris, writer. So, the Jay Lee era has two incredible writers, that he was able to work through. Now, Bob Harris didn't lean into what Jay Lee pretty much how he drew. John Byrne didn't lean into Jay Lee becoming a new talent. 
uh, Jay Lee, in my view, was strictly working off of assignments. And we get something like, again, like uh, we're at issue 26. Yeah, and then when we get into issue 30, right? Like four, four months later, and I don't have all of these issues, but John Byrne is still credited as writer. So Byrne transitions Jay Lee. Bob Harris comes in after uh, John Byrne. We kind of want to say Harris is still following a lot of the John Byrne rhythm. But when we get into what really, when Image became Image, uh, this is Uncanny X-Men 281. This is Homage Studios. It's Jim Lee, Scott Williams, Walsh Rotacio, and Mark Silvestri. Chris Claremont's off the book. But John Byrne comes in as the script. So John Byrne pretty much helped... Uh, with the exodus of Chris Claremont. Chris Claremont would leave the X-Men with the adjectiveless X-Men with Jim Lee and pretty much never got back to those heights. So there's just, there's a lot of criticism to John Byrne being anti-image. He wasn't anti-image. He didn't like the personalities that was in Image Comics. He came from a school of thought, a, uh, a way of superhero presentation, a way to tell a story, what we expect from the characters and what we expect from a book month to month for $1.25 to where you keep buying. This is the plight, I feel, of John Byrne at this era. It's mischaracterized right now. It really is. John Byrne and Peter David wanted to maintain the flame they were keepers of the torch in the larger sense they were absolutely correct over any of the image guys but when we get into some of this namor work the reason why we have omac here i don't know if you guys see we have some friends here toothbrush of truth we have right here we have some zipper tones John Byrne was in this phase of doing some of the best monthly zipper tunes, probably the best monthly zipper tunes in comic book history right here. Let me see, like he, he's able to do all kinds of stuff though. Like look at those shadows. We would see him go all out zipper tune in the prestige format, Dark Knight format, OMAC. And this is as good as Dark Knight Returns, Howard Chaikin's Black Hawk prestige format, just as good as DKR. The prestige format, DC Comics era of, of this, it's unmatched. So let's just get into a little bit of Jay Lee. So we get this transition, right? The reason why I have Zen and Seven Sons here is to show the evolution of Jay, Jay Lee. This cover, Steven Stern used this cover for Zen for at least two decades after this was produced. In a lot of ways, this was the image of Zen in the Galactic Ninja. Now, St. Keith also had the cover. That cover was used in a very similar way. But this really became the image of Zen. So, Jay Lee can come in, draw your character, and take it over. Take it over. Jay Lee evolves his style. Into And I never really classified it because I'm not interested in this evolution. I, I'm i just not. I like the original Jay Lee. I really do. But he becomes a little bit more brush heavy. You know, it's still a storyteller. Becomes probably more of a storyteller just based on the paneling here. But he evolves. And it's one of the, it's uh, people still lament about the original 
J. Lee. To further some of this, J. Lee is to get picked up by Rob Liefeld and Jim Lee, and he does runs on both of their respective studio books. Uh, J. Lee goes to Bloodstrike. Here he does the Wildcats trilogy in 93. And then he goes on to do his own book called Hellshock. And we will be doing Hellshock on this channel. But we get, let's get some of these in order. We have 37, 36, 27, 40. And we're missing one or two here. We got 30. All right, what, what are we missing? Where's our prime prime time issue right here? Here we go. Twenty six. This is the one. This is the one. If you're uh, bargain bin hunting, dollar hunting, fifty cent comic book hunting, this is the one you want to come across. Oh, whoa! I didn't even realize. I think. Oh, wow! I think this might be signed. Holy crap! Okay, it's signed. Cool. <laughs> they even know. Literally, they even know. So we get this evolution of Jay Lee. I keep wanting to say Jay-Z. I don't know why. Yeah, and we'll just say, like, more traditional. More panels. But we, we see the silhouettes that he loves. That he really... He came through with these silhouettes in X-Men. You know, fantastic landscapes. But we do see an evolution of him... Becoming more angular. Uh, there's more of an el element of graphic design coming in. I mean, we really get that with 37 here. See what I mean about graphic design? You know, it's, it's uh, his panels, his, his page layouts. But the panels themselves became shapes. And he started working in a lot of scratch techniques. Uh, these, th this is relatively probably like a razor blade along the paper. But see what I mean about shapes? And he kind of becomes like silhouette heavy. Right? I mean, and we get this. So, again, like this is, this is how we started. John Byrne, the traditionalist. I'm just trying to get like one of his shots of Namor. Okay. Like we get like his Namor and then we get Jay Lee. And like everything kind of changed with this. This really became, it wasn't so much Simon Bisley and Lobo. This, it, it was viewed as something else. And a lot of it too is he, during this time, because he had, had Bob Harris and John Byrne as follow storytellers, what they do with Namor at this point is completely experimentational, new, different. They're more in Alanis during this run. And it's, it's different. It's different enough from what we got with John Byrne. Again, it's not... A thousand percent. It's not like a thousand percent to where you loved it. But it's like different enough. And that's how you maintain like a monthly book. Because you. you Marvel in particular was struggling with how, how do we transition? How do we transition to, you know, like the old guard to the new? What do we do? Because we, we know this is this is what people want. This is what people are selling. So on and so forth. Like exactly. We have to figure this out. They When we get into the flow of the X-Men. We see a little bit of it. The flow of Spider-Man. We see a little bit of it. And it takes them a, like a solid 10 more years. To get again. This convergence. Where we have an overlap. So. In the headline and the thumbnail for this video, I'll just assume you've seen Scott Collins like question mark because I, I just been 
again, you know, like debating on, on how do we present this. Scott Collins comes in. And even recently, like I bought this recently, and I'm thinking it's like, you know, you kind of look into it quick and you see this. Like, you know, like you're you're in the comic box and you pull you pull it out and you just do this, right? And you see something like that, or like right, and you say, Oh, it's it's Jay Lee. So you put it in your pile and you get home and you start to go through it, and it's Scott Collins as our uh, artist here. And you're like, holy crap, Scott Collins is uh, riffing. He's just doing a Jay Lee style to fill in. And he's doing his absolute best work. I mean, like, best attempt at it. The paneling, uh, the rotation of the camera, the silhouettes. You know, like, there's, like, an energy that's just not here. And it goes to show you how important what Jay Lee was doing at the time because they they need someone to come in and you have to draw like Jay Lee. We can't deviate from it. This is what the people want. They want this more than they ever wanted the John Byrne Namor. Regardless if this being Namor's greatest run. And Scott Collins became very much institutionalized in Marvel in the early 2000s during the Joe Quesada era. He drew a fantastic Invader series. Uh, he did really good work on The Flash. And he had uh, like you know, like a coloring core. A lot of people later would color Scott Collins and his, his, his covers and these things would have these highlights. And it just looked like, like glossy action figures but in a very appealing way. So this is a footnote that's left out of left out of the Jay Lee discussion. The John Byrne work is left out of the Jay Lee discussion. John Byrne assisting Jay Lee on his premiere book and assisting in the transition of Homage Studios, Wildstorm Productions, fully taking over all the X Men books and kicking out Chris Claremont. He assisted in that. So, John Byrne's not, not anti-image. He just didn't like those guys. So, and, and people, I just wanted to present this to you because I, I see a lot of this online. I feel like it's wrong. It's mischaracterized. And, you know, we're setting some of the records straight here. 